staying up to date with the latest information is the best way to keep you and your family safe during the storm. While we had a beautiful sunny day yesterday, the storm has now approached and we are starting to feel the beginnings of its effects. I just came from a walkthrough of our emergency operations center and our latest update continues to show that Rhode Island will feel heavy impacts of high wind, loss of power, and flooding. We expect that to start happening over the next one to two hours. Yesterday we asked you to prepare for the storm. Today I'm asking you to stay home. Let me repeat that. I'm asking you, Rhode Island, to stay home until this storm passes. This is not the time to go out and see the waves or explore down trees. This is the time to stay home and stay safe. As my dad always told us, better safe than sorry. If you venture out, you are not only putting your own life at risk, but you're endangering our first responders. And I want to thank all our public safety officials, first responders, and electric crews who are working around the clock to keep us all safe. I talked to a couple of the crews that are going to be coming up from Pennsylvania today, uh, and so we know that uh, the uh, National Grid is really bringing in a great deal of resources, and we want to keep those resources coming. So I've ordered a ban on states' roadways for all motorcycles and all tractor trailers, except those carrying emergency supplies starting at 11 a.m. until further notice. We have restricted access to the Newport Pell and Jamestown Verrazano bridges for house trailers and RVs, empty enclosed trailers, or any vehicle that, in the opinion of law enforcement personnel, may not safely cross the bridge will be prohibited from traveling the bridge. Motorists who are denied passage will be assisted with safety, safely turn, turn around F, um, assistance. As of 9.30 this morning, there are around 8,000 power outages with the overwhelming majority of those outages being in South Kingstown, Warren, Bristol, and Little Compton. We are expecting extended power outages across the state throughout the day. And I've shared this concern directly with President Biden and with the national grid. The president committed to get additional utility workers to Rhode Island to help us get residents and businesses connected back to power as soon as possible. Since we are expected power outages across the state, I want to remind you and some important safety tips if your power goes out. That being said, make sure phones and electronic devices are charged. If your power goes out, keep your refrigerators and freezers closed and open them sparingly to preserve temperature. If you have a generator, only use it outdoors 20 feet away from the windows. If you are experiencing a loss of power, you can report it to National Grid by calling 1-800-465-1212. Again, that's 1-800-465-1212. And I'll continue, be continuing to work today, being escorted with state police around the state to take a look at the most troubled spots to make sure that we have a first eye look, a bird's eye view of the issues that are in front of us so that we can be quick and we can make sure that we're uh, keeping people safe and also with a look at uh, the recovery strategy which is going to be so important to our, the people who live in the state as well as our small businesses and our businesses around the state. So that I would like to turn it over to Lieutenant Governor Matos so that she can uh, uh, communicate to some of our Spanish-speaking uh, individuals that are in the state uh, to give them some direction as well. Uh, and we're fortunate to have the Lieutenant Governors with us here today. Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Governor. 
Um, I'm just going to do some highlights in Spanish. Um, le quiero recordar a toda la comunidad que el gobernador nos dijo ayer que ayer era el día de prepararse. El día de prepararse era ayer. Hoy es el día en que necesitamos que todos ustedes se queden en casa. Necesitamos que dejen las, las vías libres para que los, el personal de emergencia pueda hacer su trabajo. Tenemos que evitar el ir a irse a querer y a ver cómo está el agua. Y todo eso es, es, no es prudente ahora mismo. Algunas cosas que queremos recordarles es quédese en su casa. Manténgase al día escuchando las noticias, las últimas noticias que es, se están pasando a través de la, de la social media del gobernador y de mi página también en los medios sociales. Ahora mismo, si quiere continuar escuchando la información simultáneamente en español, puede conectarse y seguirnos en Facebook y tenemos a Rosa de Castillo haciendo la traducción en vivo ahora mismo. Recordándose, recordándose, por favor, quédense en casa. Um, el gobernador también ha puesto un límite a los camiones de cargo, al igual que a las motocicletas. Ahora mismo no están permitidos, así que por favor, no salga en motocicleta y los camiones de cargo no son permitidos en nuestras carreteras ahora mismo. Estamos esperando que va a haber mucha pérdida de electricidad, y que va a haber muchas inundaciones y los vientos muy fuertes. Así que, por favor, queremos estresarle una vez más que se queden en casa. Es, hoy no es el día para salir. El día de preparación era ayer. Mantenga a su familia segura y quédese en casa. Con eso voy a pasar el, el micrófono al director Papas. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Okay, so today our message is uh, simple. Stay safe, stay home, stay off the road, and stay tuned. We're beginning to feel the impacts of uh, now Tropical Storm Henry, uh, but the worst is yet ahead, it's early. We have tropical storm conditions for the rest of the day. This is gonna be a long duration event as we've been reporting uh, for a couple of days now. Uh, we're fortunate to have teams of experienced emergency professionals led by the governor, and we ask that you take our directions that are led by the governor very seriously. As I said, the storm is just beginning uh, to make landfall and move across Rhode Island, so please remain vigilant and safe, and stay safe and stay tuned. Now is the time to shelter in place. The storm has the potential to bring damaging wind and damaging water across the state, not just coastal communities. Damaging wind gusts, storm surges, and power outages remain strong possibilities all throughout the day and into tomorrow. With the amount of precipitation alone is the cause of concern, water is the enemy with these storms. Flash floods, flooded roadways, intersections, and other water-related perils are very real possibilities. We already have crews standing by to assist with roadside emergencies, but they will need to access our roadways, so we ask you to stay off the roads. As best as possible, continue to remain informed as to what is happening. This continues to be an evolving situation. It can move quickly. And we uh, will provide updates. Please listen to the radio and TV for information. We'll also be sending out updates on social media. Please sign up for Code Red, if at all possible, and on the REMA website for text and email updates. Avoid using the phone except for emergencies. Keep friends and family informed of your local uh, location. And if you have elderly people or people requiring special care, remain in communication with those folks as you are able and ensure they are safe. Additionally, as I said yesterday, we've activated uh, United Way 211. We thank them for their assistance. So if you have questions regarding the storm, you can call 211 uh, and get your questions answered. Uh, that's all I have. I have the panel up here. Happy to take questions. Dr. Pappas, are you aware of any injuries? And also, does anyone need, uh, has anybody needed to use the Red Cross emergency shelter? Uh, take that first part, no injuries. The second part, there are minimal folks in shelters right now. I think there are 15 in Providence and in single digits throughout the other ones uh, scattered throughout the state. What's the status of Rhode Island government tomorrow? Is it closed, open for only essential employees? 
Uh, right now, TBD, depending on the damage of the storm, uh, Governor, do you want to speak to that at all? Yeah, we're going to take a, a close look at that later in the day, and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll make a decision based on where we are uh, later in the afternoon. Colonel Manning, what are your troopers observing as far as motorists or pedestrians on the coast, people heading down there, people heading the water in the sea? So I personally went out early this morning, uh, traveled the coast from uh, westerly up, and uh, the, the messaging we gave yesterday to the public was uh, stay home, and thankfully they did. So it's very light traffic, uh, very minimal uh, areas uh, where pedestrians are walking the beach or standing uh, on the seawall. The one area of concern that universally all the chiefs have on the coastal communities are surfers and they're staging in areas uh, across South County and uh, coastal areas, Jamestown and so forth. That is a major challenge to public safety uh, during a storm, whether it's a winter storm or a summer storm. They go in the water and uh, on occasion uh, they would need assistance and then firefighters would have to go in to rescue them. So we're asking all surfers, please use your head, do not go in the water until the storm is over. <clears throat> Is there an anticipated peak storm surge? Uh, later today, as the storm makes its approach towards the what, coast. What's the estimate currently? Uh, sometime around two o'clock, I think. But I think we got lucky a little bit with the timing of the storm, uh, with the, with the tide. So it looks like it'll be not on the high tide, but on the going out low tide. And any estimate as to the size? Uh, th I'm still getting three to five feet. I haven't seen anything over that. And the other thing I'd like to just to draw attention to is uh, all of the folks from FEMA are here today helping us. You saw the truck outside when you pulled in. The FEMA Incident Management Assistance Team is here, and a representative is here if you have questions for FEMA. What is the area of the state that you're most concerned about? South County, South Coast. Block Island right now? Is it Block Island, I was just in communication with them. They're getting a little hammered right now, but they're in good shape, ready to go. Yeah, I think it's slowed down a bit, so it's pushed it back. That's why I was saying it's a long duration event because as the storm approaches, it was at about 18 miles an hour, but as it's coming closer to the coast, it's slowing down. So that means more rain, um, still in the vicinity of two to four inches, strong storm surge and, and wind over a longer period of time. No, no, they can't. They can't go up in the bucket truck safely. So they can't get up and, and, and help at the power outage now. Uh, I have National Grid here who can speak to that. Thank you, Director. Yes, sir. Uh, as the Director said and as the Governor said, this is going to be a long duration event. Um, and it's really important that we take an event of this magnitude one step at a time. Uh, first and foremost, our top priority today is public safety. So we'll be working really closely with Colonel Manny and his teams, uh, making sure that we clear all 911 calls and uh, ensure that the public remains safe. After that, we'll be working on damage assessment. As we said yesterday, that'll be a good 12 to 24 hour period to really fully understand the impact of the storm. And then following that phase, we will begin restoration in earnest. Uh, we do have a number of crews, uh, as mentioned yesterday, prepositioned throughout the state. More will be arriving today and tomorrow, so we're well prepared. Uh, but we do need to uh, brace for a, a very challenging period ahead. Director, what is the status of the National Guard right now and, and or protection deployment? It's a great question. <laughs> I'm hung up here. Uh, thanks. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as far as uh, Rhode Island National Guard goes, uh, we have approximately 130 personnel that are on duty right now. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, Friday and Saturday, our primary mission sets are uh, it, threaded and, and synthesized with uh, what Mark had shared with us in terms of high water. So we're working uh, high water, high wheel vehicles. Uh, we know that debris clearance could be an area that um, we may need to support, but we stand firmly in support of the agencies that have been uh, presented today. Uh, we also will be uh, monitoring the storm. Our own operations center is uh, up and running 24-7 down uh, at our headquarters uh, in East Greenwich. And uh, we will be standing by to support as needed. What are your expectations for inland communities, or like Providence, all the way going north? What are the expectations for the storm for those communities? 
as far as the impacts from the storm? Yeah, it's going to come straight up. It looks like it's going to touch over Block Island, come up through maybe near Charleston, and then go straight up through the state. And so as it does that, it's going to weaken, right? Uh, but it's still going to be very windy. So we anticipate uh, power outages all the way up through Rhode Island. Yeah, so I think it's important that uh, we see exactly what's going on in the ground. We'd be doing it safely with uh, our state police as escorts, but uh, we plan to be visiting Westerly, uh, Narragansett, uh, and as uh, you know, as time goes out between now and four o'clock, uh, press uh, event here, uh, we'll um, you know visit areas that make sense to make sure that we know what's going on. I I think that not only I think it's been repeated over and over again. You know, let's be safe, uh, rather safe than sorry, and. Uh, but again, we're also uh, preparing for the recovery. We know that uh, Rhode Island in the past uh, has had issues down in Newport with gas recovery. We know what that means to the, to the residents. We know that, what that means to the seniors uh, that rely on uh, the uh, you know, air conditioning during 90 degree weather. Uh, and so we're as focused today on the safety issues and that's why we're saying people stay home. Uh, let's be safe. Let the people do the work that do, that's behind me, that know how to do the work. I'm taking their guidance as well, and uh, and then we want to be really concerned about uh, being prepared to make sure that uh, the state recovers from this storm as quickly as possible. Do you anticipate asking for a declaration of disaster or any other kind of federal assistance? Well, right now we did that yesterday, and uh, the president did sign uh, a, des uh, a, a declaration that we sent, sent to them through, uh, through, our, through uh, Director Pappas. Uh, so right now we're, we're as uh, protected as we want to be at the moment and we thank the President for signing that, uh, that order. We're hearing from mayors on social media and on traditional media. Do they have like, autonomy or are you coordinating directly with various municipalities with any decisions that they're making? We're in direct contact with all the municipal leaders as you would expect as me being a former mayor. That continues and I believe we have a call with them sometime around one o'clock to kind of get an update. I think it's right in that time frame. Any uh, requests for help yet? No, I, I, I've talked to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the community leadership that is uh, going to get hit the most. They're, they're preparing as we are right now and it's kind of as a, you know, it's, right now it's on an as needed basis uh, and that's why we're going to be reaching out to the communities uh, throughout the state on the coastal side as the director said where the where with the impact we expect to be the hot, hottest hit Great. thanks everyone we'll see you okay. more. thank you so The local, uh, you know, enforcement is going to make some local decisions that they had, I believe, down in Narragansett, uh, taking the Ocean Drive away, or that, that stretch there. So, yeah, locally they're going to be able to determine, make those determinations, and right now we've, we've stated where we are at the moment. The Motorcycles off the road, uh, tra tractor trailers that are not providing emergency, uh, you know, su supplies. Uh, we're, ex you know, they're, they're, they're off the road as well. And then we'll, we'll take a look at what's going on. But again, there's no, if you don't have a reason to get out of your house, don't, don't, don't be leaving your house. This is where you want to be safe. And, we, and like I said, uh, better safe than sorry. Thank you.